we have a technical hitch. <laughs> I do apologize. Why is that smaller than usual? Hang on a second. Um, maybe that's a good thing. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Mythical Ireland Library. I'm Anthony Murphy. This is Live Irish Myths. This is episode number 200. Yes, two weeks ago, we had a celebration of the 200th episode with a nice quiz. Well, it wasn't so nice for some of you because some of the questions were a little bit tricky. Anyway, a very good evening, good night, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for tuning in this evening to our 200th episode, a packed episode tonight. Lots to talk about, lots to see and do. If you're joining us, please do comment in the chat. I've already said hello to uh, Guido Bruce, who was the first to comment tonight, to Brendan Byrne, to Wayne Bird, and to Erica Bow. And I want to also say hello to Cy B, who's saying good evening to everybody. Tom King says it was like being at the cinema. Well, all I can say is I hope you get your popcorn and Coke. Anne McCallum says, hello, Anton of the Mighty Two. I hope everyone is well and enjoying a lovely day. Beautiful, sunny, 13 Celsius in Southwest Ontario. Great to be here for episode 200. Such an amazing accomplishment and what a wonderful topic for it. Hello, Anne, and good afternoon to you. Yes, it was 16 Celsius here in Drogheda today. They do say that Europe is about 10 degrees warmer in places than it should be. So I'm not so sure that's a good thing. It's lashing rain here in Drogheda. So... The temperature doesn't really matter. It's still, the weather is still very Irish. And Scott Doherty is in southern Oregon. Woke up to our first dusting of snow this morning. That conference, yeah. Snow. Wow, don't mention snow to my wife. She'll be asking if she can go over and throw snowballs. Not at you now, necessarily, or make a snowman. Daisy Peters is in the house. Good afternoon, Daisy. You're very uh, welcome to the stream. Pat Lev is in the house. Hello, Pat. You're very welcome. Michelle Woodburn says, good afternoon from Jarrow. Jar Mm. Yes, I'm not sure I can pronounce that. Jaruigi, current and traditional home of the Wiat people, now known as Eureka, California, USA. Hello, Michelle, and good afternoon to you. Good midday to you. Mandy McCurl is in the house. Hello, everyone. Hope you're keeping well, keeping fine, Mandy. And I hope likewise from yourself. John McHugh says hello from Hoth. Hello, Joan. You are very welcome. Alan Hoskins is just checking in. We'll have to catch this later tonight. Happy 200th anniversary, Anton. Thank you, Alan. And yep, well, we've said hello. There it is for posterity. So it'll be on the video. Brilliant stuff. How's the car? Well, I will talk about that uh, in a moment. Oh, the drama. Marsha Downs says, Slaunch Anthony, looking forward to this show. Thank you so much, Marsha, and for all your kindness in the past week. Nick Eska Casterton is in the house. 200, such an amazing achievement. Congratulations, Anthony, and many thanks. Look, it would be nothing if it weren't for you folks. Really, it wouldn't. John Main is in Redmond, Washington State in the Grand Northwest. He certainly moves around. I think of all the two, uh, John Main is the one who moves around the most. John, a very good afternoon to you. <clears throat> Daisy Peters, uh, I did say hello to, I think, but I'll go, look, let's just say hello again, because Daisy's like that. She's really nice. Beth Kelly is in the house and waving hello, Beth. Sandrine Brady says, bonsoir, Antoine and the Super Tour. I'm so glad to be back with you all tonight. Hope everyone's doing well. Happy Samhain. Oh, yes. Astronomical Samhain is today. This is the across quarter day between uh, fall equinox or autumn equinox and winter solstice. Adele Perth is in the house all the way from Adelaide, Melbourne. Oh, shit. Melbourne in Australia. All the way from Australia, Adele, a very good morning to you. Tom King says, hello, Anthony and the Mighty Two. A welcome home, my good man. Oh, Paul in good fetter. What a milestone. Looking forward to tonight's broadcast. We have lots and lots to say and to do. Uh, Joan says, Anthony, my two sisters are alternative thinkers and we're sure the lights of Lou are alien origin, bucketing down here in Hope. Apparently, you could see the light beams between the shows that were projecting up from St. Peter's Church in Drada. They could be seen from Dublin. Mad stuff. And uh, lots of people saying hello to lots of other people, which is brilliant. Erica Bow, who I said hello to earlier, uh, is getting a proper on-screen wave now. Barbara Murphy checked in again as I forgot the time change. Got to move my alarm back an hour. 80 degrees plus in Tucson. That sounds nice, Barbara. I was driving a Tucson last week. I didn't mean to be. That is a Hyundai Tucson. And uh, lots and lots of chat, which I love to see. Catherine Woodruff, two books and the calendar arrived in good shape. Brilliant. I am delighted to hear that, Catherine. Adele Perth, thank you. Adele says, hello, Anthony. Congratulations on 200 episodes. I know. Can you believe it? Gronya Ivrian says, hello from the bog side. 
That is in uh, on Dura, I presume. Derry, first time on the live stream, live rather than a day or two later. Hope we're all well. Gronya, it's a great pleasure to welcome you. Fall to Roath, good on Laurel and Shaw. Uh, August uh, Cetius and get yourself comfortable. The full Irish Gary says, "Good evening, great and good to uh, another fine day on the sod." I was came from. I just came from the Glen Druid Dolmen Carrick Mines, remembering our ancestors on this sow. And sounds nice, uh, Gary. I've never seen Glen Druid, so I must make it my business to get up there. Uh, Benjamin Roos is joining from South Africa. Good evening to you, Benjamin, and thank you for joining us. I worked a South African station on amateur radio earlier on, on the 20 meter band, believe it or not. So there you go. Um, Brendan Byrne says, I never guessed that we would get to 200 chats with all these wonderful people. A huge, huge thank you, Anthony. You got us through COVID and here is to number 500. Here's to having enough material to get to 500. Yes, indeed. Rita Duffy, glad you got back safely. Looking forward to Saturday in Fornox. Yes. Our Four Knox tours, the Mythical Ireland tours of Four Knox are on Saturday. There are maybe tickets left for the 12.30 tour. I'm doubting myself now as to the tour times, the one in the middle. I think the others are sold out. Adele says, I hope you didn't send my calendars to Melbourne. No, I certainly sent them to the address that you specified, Adele, and I hope they get there quick and safe. Anna L says, good evening, Auntie and the two. I hope it's not spilling rain in Balbriggan as it is here. Um, it is spilling down, peeing. Caitlin Moon, whoa, 200. What a streak. No, I'm not going to be doing any of that. Caitlin, you're very welcome. And Sandra Boothroyd is saying good evening. Good, good evening, good evening, good evening. So we have a visual feast tonight. I've learned some features of the Melon app streaming. Uh, you saw the five-minute countdown, which is one of those, and I will be showing you several videos. Uh, first of all, a word about last week. Uh, I'll try and make this quick because you don't want to be bored with the details. So last week, um, myself and my good lady wife, and two of our kids, uh, our youngest son and our youngest daughter, and our youngest daughter's uh, boyfriend, were traveling to Cork on a holiday, a little holiday, first holiday since 2019, since before the pandemic. Uh, Barbara Murphy, Cogargis, Anthony, on a wonderful accomplishment, and many thanks for so many hours of enjoyment. My absolute pleasure and honor, Barbara. Dolmac McDermott is in the house. Hello there. A very good evening to you, Ali is in Tucson also. The videos of the festival were stunning, brilliant stuff. If you run out of material, you can start from the beginning. No pressure, says Nick. Hey, and I know people would still watch. And I could tell some good jokes. That would be a change. Monica Regley says, hi, Anthony, and hi, all. Hello, Monica. A great pleasure to welcome you. So we had stopped. We had we were about two and a half hours into the journey from Drogheda to Cork. Bank holiday Monday. It's raining very heavily. There's a lot of spray on the road. And I have all the lights on the car on so everybody can see us. And we stopped for food in Junction 3, Manor Stone, on the M8 after leaving the M7. And we're sort of saying, grand, after this, we live about an hour and three quarters to run. And about 10 minutes down the road from Manor Stone, the car started going really slowly. It started slowing down. And I put the pedal to the floor. And I said to Anne, are we going uphill? And she said, no. And I said, well, it feels like it because I have my foot to the floor and yet the power is dropping. The car went into what's called limp mode. Uh, this is what the technicians or the mechanics call it limp mode when it detects that there's something wrong it limits the power to prevent damage to the engine good right except for we were on our way to cork on a holiday and it was a bank holiday monday we pulled in and uh i topped up at one of the junctions i topped up the oil and the coolant thinking maybe it's a little bit low on oil and coolant got going again same problem again Michelle Woodburn, today is our 30th anniversary. I love that it is on Samhain. Well, happy anniversary to you, Michelle, and congratulations. Uh, Erica Humberducey is in Ipswich, and it's very drizzly in Suffolk. Well, it's very, very rainy. It's not just drizzly here. It is tumbleweed, says Joan McHugh. Has that got something to do with my jokes, I wonder? Anyway, uh, back on the road, happened again. Car slowed down. We pulled in at Cashel to the service station there, and I made the decision to ring Ford Assist because I drive a Ford van, and it turns out that Ford Assist is AA. And uh, it took, about from the moment we had the first issue until the decision was made to tow the car was about four and a half hours. We sat and watched as the afternoon's pale light went to darkness, basically, gradually, and it lashing rain. The only good thing is that we were in a car park at a service station 
where we could get coffees or sweets or McDonald's if we wanted, and we could use toilets. We weren't stuck at the side of a motorway. Just a warning to anybody of you in Ireland. Um, uh, if you're driving on a bank holiday, it doesn't matter how much AA cover you have. Even if you're on the top plan, just bear in mind that on a bank holiday, uh, there are fewer staff on the road. Um, and so they won't get to you immediately. That's the point. The other thing is that the rent, the, when we made the decision based on the advice of the AA mechanic to uh, to tow the car, uh, and well, at that point, we rang, we had been in touch with Enterprise, who are the car rental uh, group. And they said, uh, yeah, we can give you a car, but you'll have to come to Waterford because we can't deliver one on a bank holiday. And I said, you do realize we are stuck in cash, Cashel in County Tipperary, which is a long way from Waterford on a wet, uh, a very wet uh, bank holiday Monday night. And so we took the decision to bunk down, started ringing some bed and breakfasts in Cashel. I want to sh uh, say a special shout out to Cornelius in, I believe it's Rockville House bed and breakfast in Cashel. We rang two B&Bs. Uh, the first lady said, no, I'm sorry, we're full, but I recommend you ring this place. And we, we rang the second place. And he said, Cornelius, I'm sorry, but we're full. But having heard about my predicament, said, sure, why don't you borrow my car to bring you to your destination? Which I thought was an incredibly generous gesture. We're talking about a man I've never met. I was only speaking to on the phone. He doesn't know whether I'm a criminal or a bad driver or what I am. And he offered me the use of his car to get to Cork, which I thought was profoundly generous. Um, and if one thing I learned from last week, it was the immense generosity and good spirit of ordinary people. So uh, we took the decision. We got two rooms in a hotel in Cashel, um, thanks to Lisa there for sorting us out. And the, the amount of luggage we had, it's embarrassing. The amount of stuff we had to transfer from the Ford into the taxi and from the taxi into the hotel. Anyway, we made a night of it. Myself and herself went to the bar in the hotel and said, look, feck it. We'll pick it up tomorrow. The next day we got a car delivered, but it was only a five seater with a small boot. And we had a huge challenge uh, bringing our luggage the rest of the way to Cork. We did manage to salvage something of a holiday from it, but I was stressed by the whole thing. I was frustrated by the whole thing. And I had early every hour, Tuesday and Wednesday, I had phone calls to mechanics, to Ford garages, to Enterprise Car Rental, uh, to uh, the lady who owns the house that we rented in Cork to tell her what was going on. The others did manage to have a really enjoyable holiday, thankfully. Anyway, um, the engine management light was not on. Uh, that was the strange thing. Uh, limp mode, but no warnings on the dashboard. No lights, no signals, nothing. Turns out, after a lot of investigation, thank you very much to Robbie Manton of Manton Motors, uh, who is just off Junction 8, Junction 7, Junction 9, Junction 9 on the M8 in Cashel. Uh, for agreeing to take the car at short notice. The Ford garage in Clonmel couldn't see look at the car until the middle of this week, and that was Monday last week. So I said, look, I, I'll get it dropped to a local mechanic. And uh, he was able to chat to the Ford people and reckoned there was something wrong with the water pump. And it's probably a good thing that we didn't use the car any further because we could have blown a head gasket or worse, destroyed an engine. Long and short of it is that we eventually got home in the Ford. We were told that we should only drive it on the side roads and keep it to a maximum of 80 kilometers per hour, which is what we did. And uh, we came home via all the back roads on Friday. Uh, just got into Drogheda just as it was getting dark, uh, relieved, tired, and delighted that we were able to salvage something of a holiday. In the meantime, some other things happened. I posted a couple of posts on Facebook one last Tuesday morning when I was very stressed by the whole thing. And the next one, the next day, when there had been such a huge response, I had offers of use of car coming to collect us. Uh, I know a mechanic, drop your car here. I'll talk to my mechanic friend, blah, blah, all this stuff, right? An immense amount of help, huge number of people reaching out via email, Facebook message, phone calls, text messages, Instagram, all that stuff, right? Twitter. Um, and I was inundated with this sense of um, support and friendship. I had one lady who said to me, she messaged me and said, um, years ago, I was 
I took part in an event organized by Dolores Whelan, my good friend in Ravensdale in Dundalk, who has been on our conversation series on the live streams. And she said, I only met you once. You probably don't even know me. But come here. I have a car and it's sitting there doing nothing. So if you want it, you can have it as long as you like. This, I, I am simply overwhelmed by the response. And it really made me feel that, you know, there is a huge and lovely some of these were family members and some of these were friends and acquaintances but some of these were not like cornelius a total stranger to me offering me the use of his car and i think at that stage i should have realized stop stressing anthony because you know you have this huge amount of support and it was just the most beautiful thing and that's the thing i want to acknowledge this evening is the gratitude for oh i was so touched i was actually so moved by it that it was emotional actually you know i was just like I couldn't, I literally couldn't believe it. And uh, come hell or high water, uh, if if the vehicle had been undrivable and I, I wasn't able to get home, there were a dozen people at least who were willing to drive. Marty Mulligan, who some of you know, I'm going to shame him now or not. I'm going to embarrass him. Marty is one of the guides at Ishnock. Well, Marty said, I have a minibus and I'm willing to drive from Mullingar down to Garrettstown in Cork on the south coast near Kinsale and pick you up and bring you home. And it would be my pleasure. And I'd love to have a chat with you on the way home. And I just thought, gee, Mackers, you know. Anyway, then what happens? The bowel Tom King on Gubba gets an idea to organise a GoFundMe uh, to raise money to help to pay for the hotel or the repairs or the rental car or whatever um and uh, at this moment in time that gofundme has raised a thousand euros now myself and tom have had a few conversations about that i am bowled over by that gesture i really am i'm just uh, i'm not astonished i shouldn't be astonished i just know that people out there are very good and i know that despite as i said on my post on friday oh sorry on wednesday people are very good despite everything that's going on in the world the rise in fuel prices, inflation, the war, uh, the refugee crisis, uh, you know, climate change, all the things that people are getting depressed about and are filling their heads with negativity. There are still lots and lots and lots of really wonderful, decent, fabulous people. We should not forget that when we feel a moment of crisis, a moment of depression, a moment of frustration, a moment when we feel alone in the world and we feel that, you know, our life is suddenly full of problems don't forget to reach out it's the most important thing in a simple in a very simple thing that uh, simple sort of move as it were i wrote a post about what we were going through which to be honest with you let's call a spade a spade here uh it's first world problems anthony you know i'm on holidays and my car has broken down it's not like i don't know where my next meal is coming from it's not like i have to flee my home because the shells falling down outside and people are getting killed it, you know it's not like i'm in an abusive relationship it's not like um i've been fired from a job it's you know it's not like i've had to get on a boat and cross the mediterranean because i've had to flee oppression in my home country so you know it wasn't it's a first world problem you know and i wanted to make sure that it didn't sound like a sense of privilege that you know somehow um you know i should be looked after but i tell you what i didn't have any expectations i just wanted to get it off my chest and what ensued was the most remarkable outpouring of love uh, that i've ever experienced um from people as i say far and wide from from drahada people from cork people from cashel the people of cashel were tremendously good uh, I just wanted to get this off my chest and to tell you that humanity is very much alive. That there are a tr tremendous number of very, very good, kind-hearted people in the world. Uh, there were a few people who I probably won't mention because they probably don't want to be mentioned, uh, who provided some financial support. The practical support, the emotional support, and just the just the whole notion of support. It's just amazing. It's amazing. So if if, if nothing else, I want to reiterate uh, that I'm very, very grateful. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, we're all grateful uh, for the love and concern that was shown. Look, if it had been an ordinary Monday, 
chances were we we would have been on the road within a couple of hours and we would have got to Cork that evening and everything would be grand. Because it was a bank holiday Monday, it was a much different situation. As I say, we made we made the most of it. We ended up having a nice holiday. I got some beautiful photographs in Kinsale and the old head of Kinsale. I'll be sharing those uh, with Mythical Ireland followers over the next couple of weeks. So do keep a lookout for that. Anyway, I hope I've said enough about that. A special thanks to Tom King. Uh, Tom uh, is a true friend. Uh, he and I did not know each other before the pandemic. Tom reached out to me after, I don't know, 20 or so episodes of Live Irish Myths and wanted to give me gifts uh, as a gesture uh, of thanks for the live streams. And we've been friends ever since, as you probably know. Um, but we're, our friendship grows and grows by the day. Um, and I, I wanted to give a special mention to Tom because, look, uh, at this moment in time, I do want to say one thing about the money. It's important to say this. I have always believed, and it's a family thing, and it's the way I grew up. It was the way I was raised by my parents, my mother and my father. You know, we're, we don't hold the hand out. We like to be independent. We like to stand on our own feet. I like to look after my own bills. I like to sort of you know keep on top of things myself sometimes that's hard work sometimes you have to make things stretch out it can be difficult to make ends meet sometimes we all have been through that with mortgages and bills and everything else at this moment in time i haven't decided about that but i my inclination is to suggest uh, that that money be donated to, to charity and i have a couple of charities in mind and um, so i'll get some reaction to that uh on the social media over the next day or two and see what you all think. Um, I just wouldn't feel right taking that. It's like my crisis was a mini, tiny little uh, drop in the ocean compared to what a lot of people are going through. So if we could uh, use that fund uh, to genuinely uh, make better the lives of people who are really, really struggling this as we come into Christmas time, then um, I think a great, great deed will have been done by Tom King and by the Mythical Ireland community, to whom I am <clears throat> very grateful. Yes, Michelle, it certainly was an adventure of uh, mythological proportions. There's Somebody said, you know, would this make a book? I said, yes. We'll call it There and Back Again, A Family's Tale by Frodo Baggins or something like that. Yes. Elaine Dent, Lingenfelter is in the house. Hello to you. Stephen O'Hara is also here. Hello, Stephen. Sandra Boothroyd says, faith in mankind never ends. And that's something we should never, ever forget. You know, uh, what was it? Yeah, somebody was mentioning Lord of the Rings, you know, that there's that there's something worth fighting for. You know, that's why we continue to go on. Uh, it's... When things go badly that we see the kindness of people, isn't it? Does your heart good? Absolutely, Elaine. A hundred percent right. Uh, are you surprised, Anthony? You've given so much and taken so little. I, the, look, Brendan, the way I see it is all of these people support me and they support Mythical Ireland. You guys all buy my calendars. You buy my books. You come on my tours. You know, you've been very generous in your support um, and the support of just the community and having you on the live streams. So I actually feel that I have uh, received a huge amount, you know. Uh, Debbie says, that's amazing, wonderful to hear. Yeah, it it's definitely lifts the heart. I'm just going to share the comments before I move on. Uh, thank you, Adele. Um, I'll, look, I don't know what to say at this stage. I'm just embarrassed now. Peter Briars is in Tasmania. A very good morning to you, Peter. You're uh, very welcome to the live stream. Alexander says, reminds me of Lord of the Rings, where all the evil they were facing, Sam reminds, they're still good out there and it's worth fighting for. Thank you. That's the one, Alexander. Yes, it's exactly right. You know, Angel Barboni says, love you all. And that is very much reciprocated, Angel. Thank you uh, for your uh, message. Your experience shows that we're still a world connected and supported, says Michelle. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, you had a call from my accountant today. And... Uh, during the course of the call, he said, uh, I didn't ring you last week because I didn't want to be annoying you because I know you had a bit of a crisis. But come here, I have a car if you need the end of it. You know, I mean, people every just every day people are offering a car. It's just something else. You know, sometimes it's important to allow people to help, says Rita. Yes, it is. But look, the main thing is we're home. We're safe. We're sound. We had a good holiday. And as I say, there may be other people out there who are more deserving and who need need 
So let's just think about that for a little bit. Derek Hollingsworth is saying, uh, Hi, Akara Mohaid or Livsha Bill Ungar. Ungar. Oh, brilliant. Um, uh, Kaid or is that? 100 hour sorry uh derek my irish isn't just in, entirely up to scratch but you're very welcome rita duffy never mind uh the rad a glass would have been a stress buster <laughs> sandrine says yeah you're absolutely right there are good people everywhere fortunately we must keep faith in humans the tua is a good example yes the wonderful wonderful community that we've built up here it's tremendous ali says the world is not as terrible uh, as the media depicts the average individual see themselves as good and reflect that out when possible Yes, indeed. Uh, Elaine says, between you and Anthony, you're making me cry, but happy tears to see such kindness. Monday nights would not be the same without you, says Wayne. Well, I, uh, yes, when I'm practicing my bad jokes, I wonder whether that's true. Karen says, uh, greetings from Boulder, Colorado. What goes around comes around. Karen, you're very kind and a very good afternoon to you. Samantha Healy is in the house. Gia Gutsch, Samantha. William Doherty says, embarrassment and gratitude is a blessing. William, you're very welcome to the stream. Thank you. I'm glad it was just a car, says Stephen. Exactly. I hadn't seen the post and I was worried when I saw Tom's kind suggestion about the GoFundMe page and I was away for the weekend at a family occasion and hadn't time to check it out. That's okay, Stephen. But yeah, exactly. It's just a car. You know, I'm fine. And, and, and my family is fine. Maria says, congratulations. Thanks, Maria. And congratulations to all of the people out there. Uh, Archaeoastronomy who helped and who offered help. Archaeoastronomy database whose uh, tie uh, is glad that we're all safe and sound. Jay Brown says, hello, Jay uh, Jay Brown, you're very welcome. His 100th hour. Yes, I thought it was Cade. Cade was 100th, all right. Cade or um, my first time with you live. John D says Derek Hollingsworth. Okay, now we need to move on because we've, I think, we've covered off the look, we've covered it off. It's not that we've covered it off, we've acknowledged the great, tremendous support, uh, the beautiful, beautiful welcome, uh, the beautiful, sorry, should I say, the beautiful gestures and the beautiful goodwill that's out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A hundred thousand times. Goramila Mahiv Goler Makharja or Fudna Krinya. Uh, thank you a hundred thousand times to all my friends around the world. Uh, Helena Breen says, evening to all the two. Believe it or not, we haven't started officially yet. I'm still rambling. Uh, I want to talk briefly about, so you'll know that every week I talk about becoming a patron and some of you probably go, oh, here's the hard sell. It's not a hard sell. The patrons are helping to support the work of Mythical Ireland and helping to make Mythical Ireland sustainable so that I'll be able to continue to do what I do, uh, not just the live streams, but videos, the photography, the tours, the talks, the writing, especially the books, the blog posts, all of that, the website. So I want to say something to you. If you're ever wondering, well, what's it worth this patronage? You know, I'm going to show you a clip of something now in a moment. I want to share this with you. Uh, Patricia McTagg, uh, thank you, uh, Patricia, for your kind message. And look, uh, I am so bowled over and overwhelmed. My my youngest son is singing his heart, his heart out out there. I'm not sure if he's aware that we are live streaming. But come here, if you happen to hear him, maybe just give him a bit of encouragement, you know. Um, so... Um, during the pandemic, I did some conversation episodes. We spoke to the likes of Eddie Lenehan and Moncon McGann and John Creedon and um, Geraldine Stout and Dolores Whelan and Patrick McCafferty and um, uh, Professor um, uh, the, 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 the Origins of the Irish, uh, J.P. Mallory and um, the dendrochronology gentleman, uh, Mike Bailey and others. You know, now that the pandemic's not, it's not quite over, but now that we're kind of able to go out there, uh, myself and a good friend of mine, Grant Wakefield, who's a, a filmmaker who I've known since 2009, have decided that we're going to go on the road making films. Now, look, I just want to say this is not the begging bowl, okay? It's not, that's not what this is. There is a higher cost in doing that than there is in getting somebody on a Zoom and having a chat with them, okay? There's getting there and the diesel and the food there's the camera equipment, there's uh, the time, etc., etc., and then all the editing. 
Uh, we interviewed in August uh, Michael Quirk, the woodcarver in Sligo. I shared a clip of that on YouTube, but the long version of it, the hour and a half version, is only available to patrons at the Bronze Age level and above. That's $10 a month and above. Now, look, if you say $10, what's $10 worth? I'm telling you now, this is, I'm trying to give you an idea of what it's worth. The second in the series was filmed a few weeks ago with Michael Slaven. Michael is the author of the Book of Tara and the Ancient Books of Ireland, and he also runs the old bookshop on the Hill of Tara. Many of you know him. Uh, I'm sure Adele Perth, for instance, will know him, even though she's in Australia, because she was at Tara, and I'm sure that, Adele, you met Michael in, in the bookshop. Michael is 91, right? And I wanted for a long time to sit him down and have a chat with him. Triscoll Hearth is in Kentucky and saying hello. Good evening to you. Peter Kennedy is in Balbriggan uh, and it's wet and windy. Yes, indeed. And Adela saying she remembers the first episode. I know. And uh, thankfully, we've hopefully that giant dark cloud of COVID has passed. The second is Michael Slaven. Now, I wanted to talk to Michael about his love of Tara, his love of the manuscripts, his love of writing and books and his bookshop. I caught something that I think was absolute magic. Sorry, when I say I, I mean we, myself and Grant. Now, this is a two or three minute clip from a one and a half hour film, which was shared with Mythic Ireland patrons at the Bronze Age level on Saturday. I'm hoping this will encourage some of you to become patrons at the Bronze Age level so that you will get this plus the Michael Quirk film, plus a lot of other stuff uh, that's not seen uh, on the general social media. Um, I'm going to shut up. I asked Michael towards the end of our lovely, lovely conversation in his bookshop. I asked him about his spiritual, his religious beliefs. Initially, he shocked me. But I just sat and listened. And I believe that personally, I believe this is the most the most extraordinary two or three minutes of conversation that I think I've captured in my uh, journalistic career, to be honest. You may not agree, and maybe I'm building it up too much. I'm going to shut up now, and I'm going to let you hear Michael Slavin. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. If you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. what's your own personal spirituality, your own, what, what, what do you think is, what do you think waits, if anything, beyond this life for... I would find nothing so that every moment of living is utterly precious. Every moment is an eternity. Every moment of love is a, a gem. Every person that you can perhaps help make a little happier is salvation. That the world, the universe, is a, an extraordinary mystery to which we can apply everything we applied to the unknown God. We can apply it to the universe because it is everything that we used to say about God, everlasting, all-powerful, all-giving, all of those things. I wouldn't preach to anybody because they have to find their own accommodation to the reality of their life. Sometimes they find it in a book. Sometimes they find it in a person that they meet. Sometimes they find it in a group in a relationship, whatever. But I know that humans feel vulnerable and they're always seeking for something that helps them beyond what they can do for themselves or some other human being can do for them. So they reach out to Allah or they reach out to God, they reach out to Jesus, they reach out to Buddha, they reach out to whatever it is that is beyond what this world offers them. And I am not one to say to anybody whether there is 
or there isn't. I only know what my mind will accept. And that's it. Well, isn't that extraordinary? Um, I hope you agree. Um, hi, Anya Ryan. Uh, Robert Friend has joined us. Hello, Robert. Um, yeah. Um, Sandra says, oh, bless. Words of wisdom. Wise man. Came across him by accident, says Joan, following a visit to the Museum of Country Life in Turlock. Uh, Cy B says, superb. Uh, Snapper Earl, well, yeah. Uh, I just, I just, when he said, I would say nothing. You know, I asked him, you know, what do you think waits for us after, you know, is there an afterlife, basically? And he said, I would think nothing. And I was sitting there going, shit, where is this going to go, you know? And I sat mesmerized for the next two or three minutes listening to that. Oh, man, uh, extraordinary stuff. And I'm just saying that as a patron, uh, you know, um, you're going to be getting the full length. It's an hour and 30 minutes of Michael's wonderful wisdom. A remarkable man, you know. Uh, straight to the point, says Helena. Uh, and Mandy says, poignant and profound. And some other fascinating insights about the man and how he ended up at Tara there. I'm not going to spoil it because I want you to sign up as a patron. <laughs> <laughs> oh man just such a lovely man to spend time uh, in company in the company of you know connected to the power of the universe yeah i'll just uh, sort of tease you in by saying wait till you hear the story about how he came to tara uh just you have to see it it's it's profound actually it's really remarkable anyway if you want to see the rest of that look it's patreon.com forward slash mythical Ireland. please do consider becoming a patron Sign up at the Bronze Age level. That's 10 euros or more if you like. There's a, a, an Iron Age level, which is $25 a month. Uh, there's an early medieval level, which is 35 a month. And there's a silver patron level, which is 50 a month. There's a gold patron level, which is 100 a month. I don't have any gold patrons yet. I actually have three silver patrons. Um, and you'll see when you go to Patreon what you, you know, what, what you get for your 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 pledge, as it were. It's not that you're just throwing money away. You're getting something in return and you're getting something um, exclusive, as it were. Anyway, on to the main topic of the night. I know if that wasn't enough, I mean, I think what we've had so far is enough for one episode. But uh, we're talking about the Lou Festival of Light. Um, you may, some of you who had seen some of the live streams and some of the videos from that event, may have recognized a voice there. Um Debbie Sheehy says, it was mesmerizing to listen to. Thanks so much for sharing. I love Michael Slavin and spending time talking to him at his bookshop in Tara is medicine for the soul. I'm going to increase to Bronze Age patron now and so looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Debbie. Uh, that's very kind of you. And I believe that you will greatly, greatly enjoy uh, the conversation with Michael. Uh, that is probably the best moment. I I've shared it with you because I just felt I couldn't not share it with you. I felt it was something that we all needed to see and to consider, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, we're talking about Lou Festival of Light. So it's now over. But uh, Lou Festival of Light was an event uh, which um, was funded uh, quite extensively by Falja Ireland uh, and was organised to a great degree uh, by in collaboration between Drogheda Bids, which is Love Drogheda Bids, stands for Business Improvement District Scheme. Uh, it's, a, it's a scheme that's open to certain towns in Ireland and they have this bids manager in every town. And what happens is the businesses basically contribute a fund uh, and this manager makes things happen in the town to bring in visitors and to make, you know, to help people spend money in the businesses of the town. Um, uh, Bids was heavily involved in the mythological murals, the Drogheda uh, Urban Art Trail, as was the Drogheda Art Centre here in Drogheda, uh, and that was funded uh, to a large extent by uh, the Arts Council, with funding also from uh, Love Drogheda Bids. This time round, with I mean, if you thought six giant mythological murals weren't enough, you know, um, the 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 notion was put forward. Uh, by the bids manager. His name is Trevor Connolly, by the way. Trevor put forward uh, the notion of, well, you know, I, he had seen this uh, show in Derry uh, where uh, these light shows were projected onto some landmark buildings there. And he said, this is very impressive. If we could make this happen in Drogheda, this would be fantastic. Guess what? He and 
lots of others made it happen. Of course, there's a bids committee. There are uh, lots of uh, people from Drogheda on that committee. He's not working on his own. So I know he probably wouldn't want me to give him all the credit, but I do give him a great degree of it. Um, Loud County Council, who are wonderful in providing the support. And in fact, one of the ladies in the council uh, was the one who actually completed the application for the funding. And then Visual Spectrum, who are the company who actually made the animations and the sound and recorded the audio. Uh, the result was a visual and audio audio uh, feast, but also a celebration of uh, the Boyne Valley's uh, mythology and a little bit of history as well. Uh, really, what we were doing was bringing the local mythology home because all of the stories that were told as part of the Lou Festival of Light, I'm going to show you all the videos, by the way, as part of this live stream. Um, you know, um, they're all very well known. So the Salmon of Knowledge was one. Everybody in Ireland knows that story. However, not everybody knows the story of Bowen approaching the Well of Segish or Necton's Well. Not everybody knows the Song of Amergan. Not everybody knows that County Louth, the county that I live in here, is named after a Tuatha Dan and deity, Lou Samuel Domach. And so, you know, some of these myths, I mean, the Song of Amergan, I have seen in dozens and dozens of books published around the world. But I just wonder how many people in Drogheda, and I have wondered for a long time, really know the importance and the connection and the fact that this is a very local myth, as it were. So when it came to a theme, the theme of mythology was suggested and uh, they approached me and said, Anthony, you're the man. Why don't you come up with some ideas for myths? And I said, certainly we came up with a list and we selected a number from that list. There were three monuments that were selected. The old abbey in Drogheda, which was founded in the 12th century by the Normans originally. I think it was later taken over by the Augustinians. Uh, and it was a hospital at one stage. Um, so it's an 800-year-old building. We had St. Peter's Church, uh, the Roman Catholic Church on West Street in Drogheda, built in 1884, a huge church, a cathedral. It's not called a cathedral, but it's a beautiful uh, cathedral built of local limestone in a French Gothic style. It's a beautiful church. And then Lawrence Gate, which I grew up in the shadow of on the Cord Road. Lawrence Gate uh, is a Barbican. It was one of the main gateways into the town when the town was uh, walled by the Normans, again, 12th, 13th century. Um, so an immense, immense pleasure for me to be involved. So I scripted, uh, we we just, you know, the decision was made that the shows would run somewhere around six, seven, eight minutes apiece. And that what would happen is they would be projected in the evening time after dark onto the building with uh, narration and music. And that between the show, there'd be a countdown clock, like what I had at the start of this live stream. And then the show would repeat so that you could move from one to the other and not miss a show, if you get me. Um, and so then uh, when we had decided what stories were going to be told, uh, you know, we had a, a meeting of the stakeholders and somebody said, uh, we need a narrator. Anybody know a narrator? And I just put my hand up and said, um, I wouldn't mind doing that. I've been told I have a face for radio. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, immediately uh, roundly accepted. And so uh, myself and uh, local storyteller, Gráinne Rafferty. Uh, some of you will have met Gráinne. Uh, she's the lady who I do the tours of the Mythological Murals home uh, with, sorry, home. Uh, I was just reading uh, Michelle's message there when I said that there is power in bringing the stories home. Um, so I'm going to show you one by one the shows now. This is after the fact there were supposed to be eight nights of shows, four nights and then a break of a night and then four nights. What happened was last Monday when we were stranded in Cashel, because of the heavy rain, there was flooding in Drogheda and there was flooding in many places in Ireland. Uh, they decided to cancel that night's show. So there were seven nights. Um, as it went on, huge crowds. The crowds got bigger and bigger. Last Friday, when we got home, myself and my son Finn went down and were amazed by the number of people around. And on Saturday, I went down again for the last night and the town was thronged. It was thronged with people. Uh, so I'm going to give you a flavor. Now, just bear in mind that when you're there and you're watching it and you're hearing it and you're amongst the crowd, it's a very different experience to seeing a video of it on a screen. So some of you are watching on phones and tablets. This will not be a huge visual feast for you. You will not get the same uh, awe, awe, feeling of awe as you do when you're standing in front of it, watching it, right? So I, I, I'm not apologizing for that. I suppose I'm just letting you know that that's the case. Uh, two of these videos, because the old abbey and the church are upright, they were shot upright. So the video is in the middle of the screen. You know, it's not it's it's portrait mode rather than landscape. 
Uh, and for that, I apologize as well. The first one we're going to see is the Old Abbey. And at the Old Abbey, uh, we had the story uh, Ashlinga Ingersoll, uh, which many of you will know because we featured it in uh, at least one episode of Live Irish Myths. It is on the Mythical Ireland website, and I've talked about it at length in my book, Island of the Setting Sun. So hopefully many of you are familiar. If you're not, here is a synopsis. Enjoy this visual feast. And again, I'm going to play a video now and shut up for a few minutes and give you a bit of peace. Angus Og was the miracle child of New Grange. He was said to have been conceived and born in the same day. His parents were the Dagda, the Sun God, and Boeing, goddess of the River Boyne and the Milky Way. lived in the great monument of Siedenbroga, known today as New Grey. One night, in a dream, a beautiful young woman appeared to him. He fell immediately in love with her, but when he tried to embrace her, she vanished. Night after night, mystery maiden appeared in his dreams, but he could not hold her. He soon became lovesick and refused to wait. As he wasted away, his parents became worried for him and enlisted the help of their fellow deities, the Tua Pedama. Their urgent task was to find out the woman's name and to ascertain her location. News soon came from both Jarok, brother of the Dagda, that he had found the maiden at a mysterious place called the Lake of the Dragon's Mouth. Both said that Angus must go to the lake to see whether he recognised the woman as the beautiful maiden he had seen in his dreams. When he arrived at the lake, Angus could see 150 beautiful white swans linked by silver chains. He called out to Care, whose name had been revealed by both Gerald. Who calls me? asked one of the swans, more beautiful than all the rest. It is Angus. Please come to me, he replied. Care came to the shore, but she told Angus that if he was to have her love, he must take her form. He put his two hands on her and transformed into a swan, and they slept together. The next day, they departed from the lake, and the two great birds flew northeast until they came to the great monument of New Grange. They made sweet music at Brunabonia, music so beautiful that the people who heard it fell asleep for three days and nights. From that point on, Care remained with Angus in the great brew of New Grange. It is said that some years they assumed human form and other years they were swans. Even today, the Hooper swans spend the winter at New Grange, and in the spring they are seen to fly off towards the north, perhaps towards the land of eternal youth.
And there you go. That was the story of Ashlinga Inga, so beautifully uh, animated by Visual Spectrum. I, I want to say a special thanks in particular to Oshin O'Brien and Ryan Vale of Visual Spectrum. I worked very closely with Ryan in particular on the project. They were fabulous to work with, amazing people. Uh, they do amazing work, as you can see. Uh, how wonderful was it for me? I have first started telling that story in the year 1999. That's 23 years ago. Uh, I believe it's one of the most beautiful stories of Irish mythology, and it's uh, located uh, in the Boyne Valley at Newgrange, uh, just a few miles outside Drogheda. What an enormous pleasure it was uh, to, uh, you know, to bring, as I say, to bring these myths home. Um, so the next one I'm going to show is the one that was shown at Lawrence Gate. Uh, and this features the story of Bowen. Uh, you'll know that I have a very special place in my heart for Bowen. Uh, I wrote what I believe to be the only book in existence dealing exclusively with Bowen and telling her story as it is told in the mythology in the manuscripts. Um, and that is uh, Bowen, the goddess of the River Boyne and the Milky Way. Don't forget, signed copies available on the Mythical Ireland website. Got to get that plug in. Uh, and also uh, the Song of Amergan. Uh, now, the Bowen story is narrated by Grán Rafferty. Uh, uh, the Song of Amergan is narrated by myself. I insisted, and I think I made the right decision. I hope you agree, and maybe you might want to comment afterwards. I uh, pleaded, I insisted that uh, the Song of Amergan be chanted uh, Gaelge in the Irish, that is in the manuscripts, the Middle Irish, and Asperla uh, in English as well. So every word of the poem is first spoken in Middle Irish and then in English, the translation. Uh, I hope you agree, uh, as I do, that it worked very well. I hope you agree anyway. Uh, so just before I do that, just going to quickly have a look at the chat, just in case I've missed anything. A lot of people uh, with a lot of very nice comments about um, the show. Uh, look, as beautiful as it is to see on on, on video, it's uh, 10 times, 100 times better to experience it in person. But I understand that a lot of you are in other parts of Ireland, in England, in other parts of the world, Scotland, Wales, uh, Europe, uh, America, North and South, you know, Australia, and you can't, you couldn't be here for it. So I suppose this is the best we can do uh, to bring it to you. This one is uh, Lawrence Gate, as I say, uh, the story of Bowen and the Song of Armageddon. Long ago, in the deep mists of prehistory, there was a great and radiant goddess who had existed for all of time. Her name was Bowen. One day, she approached the sacred well that was guarded by her husband, Nekton, and his three male cupbearers. She broke the taboos of the well by walking around it three times anti-clockwise looking deep into its shaded waters. As a result, the well burst forth into a great fountain, carrying Boan along as it began to form a great river, winding towards the sea. By the great force of the waters, Boan lost an eye, a hand, and a leg. These parts of her body created different portions of the River Boyne as it formed, and the landscape around it. Her little lapdog, Dubilla, was carried by the waters too, until eventually they reached the estuary where the rushing waters met the sea. Bowen became the Milky Way, the great river of the sky which still bears her name, Balak Nabofin, the way of the white cow, while her little dog Dubilla was transformed into the islands of Rockabilly. When we look out to sea today, or up at the great river at the sky at night, we are reminded of the great sacrifice of Bowen, who gave herself so that the world and the cosmos could be created. Way in war, I am wind on sea.
I'm Tom Trehan. I am Ocean Wave. I'm Foam Mara. I am Roar of Sea. I am Bull of Seven Fights. I'm Shaggy Mile. I am Vulture on Cliff. Who is he who announces the ages of the moon? Clear do a leg pointed rain, and who the place where falleth the sunset? Kia bear boar o hig tetra. Who calls the cattle from the house of Tetra? Kia Dov, Kia J Delvis, Favru, and Nind Ailshi. Who is the truth? Who is the god who fashions egg in a fortress of gangrene? Pointe in vain, enchantments about a spear. Pointe goihe, enchantment of wind. And there you go. 
<laughs> there is a song of armor again uh dramatically retold i hope you agree uh triscoll Hart says this is just fabulous and fabulously inspiring uh, just a reminder that all of those all of the three videos i'm showing are on the mythical ireland youtube channel for you to watch uh, in your own time absolutely adore the irish translation actually with the fabulous music and images fantastic says joan brilliant stuff um Marsha Downs says, oh, powerful. Yes, best done in both Gaelic and English. Great decision to do that. It is pure and powerful poetry in either language, even if one does not speak uh, Irish. It touches the heart and soul and the words resonate there. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. I uh, love the salmon swimming, says Barbara. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, oh, I just thought the imagery was fabulous, you know. Um, are you planning to do it on doing it again in the future? That uh, uh, Lou Festival of Light will return to Drogheda next Samhain and the Samhain after that, the first of three years. We just don't know yet how we're going to top what we just did, but we'll we'll do something. I know we will. You know, Wiccan Moon says, oh, great. I think I may have uh, shown that comment already. Uh, thanks so much, says Wiccan Moon. You're very, very welcome. Um, Song of Amergin is so wonderfully spoken and interpreted. Uh, Amergin, uh, Rita, is A-M-E-R-G-I-N, although there are variant spellings, as as with all uh, proper names. Uh, brilliant. Gohalan says Carol Barrett. Rita Duffy is thanking Anne. Magnificent is Evan Lum, uh, says Alexander. Well, full of symbolism, says Mandy. I wonder what people are dreaming after this. Yeah. Excellently put together, says John. Beautiful imaginary and vocals. Brilliant. Now you need one to do one for Glenn Deluxe's, Brendan. Hey, challenge accepted. And last but not least, uh, certainly, look, uh, everybody had their favourite. Um, uh, the, the largest was the St. Peter's Church one, uh, the most visually dramatic, um, just because of the huge surface area. Um that the projections had to cover it was the longest of uh the projections it was the loudest and it seemed to attract the greatest crowds but that's because there's a natural sort of square in front of st peter's church where people could gather this one again is shot upright so it will be smaller on your screen than perhaps um it it could be uh, but i hope you enjoy it uh, at st peter's church we had the story of the salmon of knowledge uh, again you'll know that that's close to my heart i wrote and my first monograph was called Finn and the Salmon of Knowledge. Um, we then feature the deity Lou. Uh, well, it's a, a few lines from the coming of Lou where he goes to Tara in uh, Kot Moitura, the second battle of Moitura, uh, where he announces himself to the gatekeeper and he lists all his skills. Well, he doesn't list them all in this version, but I think you'll enjoy it nonetheless. And there's a little bit about St. Patrick's arrival because he arrived in the Boyne Valley and came up to the Hill of Slain and a little bit about the church itself. I believe you'll enjoy it. Uh, so this is uh, St. Peter's Church from Lou Festival of Light Drogheda. Uh, if I can make sure I get the right video. Finnegas had been waiting by the bank of the River Boyne for seven years for the Salmon of Knowledge. It had been prophesied that he would eat this famous salmon and that nothing would remain unknown to him afterwards. He caught the great fish, but just as he did so, a young boy called Jevna came along. The druid instructed the boy to cook the fish, but warned him not to eat any of it. The boy did as he was told, but as he cooked the salmon, a blister rose up on its skin. He pushed it down with his thumb, but burnt himself as he did so. He immediately put his thumb in his mouth to relieve the pain, thereby gaining all the mystical wisdom that was due to Phineas. Finnegus knew that his chance had passed and gave the boy a new name, Finn. Not just because he had fair hair, but in recognition of the wisdom Finn 
that the boy was now endowed with. I am the builder. That champion was Lou, whose name survives today as the Irish name of County Loud. And on the county crest is emblazoned his epithet, Lou Samaldonach, Lou the Many Gifted. St. Patrick introduced Christianity into Ireland in the year 432 AD. He travels to the Hill of Slain, where he lit the Paschal fire, whose flame burned so brightly it was seen all across the landscape. as we see it today, was built in 1884. Constructed of local limestone, Ashlar, in a French Gothic style, it is famous for its great rose window and the national shrine 
of St. Oliver Plunkett. And there you have it, uh, St. Peter's Church featuring the Salmon of Knowledge, uh, Lou Samuel Domac and uh, St. Patrick. Hope you enjoyed that. I have a few um, uh, comments, more than a few comments to catch up on. Uh, guitar guitar archaeology says that is amazing. <laughs> I tell you what, if you weren't able to stand there and look at it, standing there and seeing it in person was absolutely mesmerizing. Uh, Peter says the graphics on the cathedral are brilliant. It looks like something from a Castlevania video game. Yes, indeed. Immersion Dan's extraordinary visuals at St. Peter's took my breath away. Uh, don't forget, those videos are on the Mythical Ireland YouTube channel if you want to watch them all uh, individually. Uh, did the council pay for all this, Anthony? Uh, the county council was heavily involved, yeah. Uh, it's a big budget production. And, uh, you know, you can imagine just the, the 3D graphic, graphics designers uh, animators uh, uh the projections the security teams you know uh yeah it's a big project can it project onto water if so the round tower then the upper lake and to finish it, st kevin's church Drive. not sure about water brendan do you know what uh it, probably you know vicky wallace southern hello vicky and evan and chili if you're there as well uh thank you for joining us uh glad you enjoyed that wouldn't this be interesting if it led to competitions in the future that the community can vote on says catherine yes indeed and actually the community involvement was a huge part of it you probably heard there the 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 parents and the children this is amazing oh look at the snakes daddy you know and uh, that was one of the beautiful things to behold it was the it was a real family event you know um lots and lots of children and um, so i love it because you know of because you know from the point of view of my involvement uh, we're getting the stories into the eyes and ears of the young younger ones you know we're bringing the stories back you know ali says i'm awestruck it brings the larger than life stories into reality it feels tangible uh, yes indeed andrew says great animations yes uh, monica says so powerful um yes different spellings of amrigan uh, Anne is telling us there yes indeed but as I say, be careful with personal names and the proper names, uh, proper nouns and, and place names in, in uh, uh, mythological tracts, because even the monks and the scribes spelt them different ways, you know. Nothing like it in the States, says Patricia. Apparently there's stuff like that in Disneyland. I'm not sure if that's how much is, that is true. Tom King says, love those Illin pipes haunting. Yes, indeed. Uh, Angel says, gives me chills all over my body. Brilliant stuff. J J Joan says, this is super. I really thought at the time they were real fireworks. <laughs> uh, Anya says, imagine the salmon of knowledge swimming into the Boyne. There's a mosaic of same in the Boyne Valley Hotel and Country Club pool. That's a wonderful nod. Yes, indeed. Um, how can people just walk on and not watch? I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, Spectacular says, Daisy... Uh, great work done by all, says Helena. Uh, pants knocked off by Salmon of Knowledge Sequence, says Mandy. <laughs> uh, yeah, Salmon. Uh, yes, you're all right. Sam Lon. Sal Salmon, whoops. Um, I just realized I'm eating salmon for my lunch, says Kathy May. 
Well, may it be a hearty meal for you and may it bring you plenty of knowledge. My gaster is flabbed, <laughs> says Peter Briars. Uh, uh, Vicky says we have COVID-19. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope that you won't be too unwell with it and that it will be a mild uh, dose. Um, Rita says just realized I had salmon for dinner. Feeling very clever now. Uh, yes, indeed. Keeping it all alive, says Selena. Yeah, uh, what a fabulous uh uh, just a fabulous production to be involved with. As I said, a special, a very, very special thanks to the gents, uh, to the people in Visual Spectrum uh, and all the artists involved in creating those 3D animations. Each of those, even if they only lasted, say, 10 seconds, each of those took, uh, you know, dozens of hours of rendering time on very powerful computers. Not the sort of stuff that you could do it at home on your own, just put it that way. And uh, when I recorded the uh, narrations, um, I had no idea what to expect, you know, I really didn't. And actually it was um, the first evening of the first show before it got dark. Uh, they said they they were going to, they, they ran uh, what we would call a, um, uh, a test, you know, a dry run uh, without sort of announcing it. And I caught a little bit about that, of that and we're going to see if I can upload that. Give me one second here now. Um, just have to find it where that is. And what it's called I'll, I'll upload i'll see if i can upload that file format must be less than no i can't because it has to be less than 300 megabytes oh well I, I could show that to you but i can't at the moment um yeah so um yeah talk about a brilliant way to celebrate episode number 200 you know um brendan is wondering if i could do a projection of dad jokes and i'm sure i could i'm not sure it would draw the crowd i think it would chase the crowd away probably to be honest you know uh, Brendan says, I saw a light show like this on the cathedral in San Antonio, Texas a few years ago. I thought it was excellent, but nothing compared to this. Oh, I'm glad to hear it, that we have won up on the Texans, huh? Um, I met a nine-year-old today, says Carol, in forest school, uh, who was fascinated by Irish mythology. He was telling me all about Balor. So great to see the young ones enthusiastic. So great to keep these stories alive. Uh, yes, indeed. Um yeah, so if you want to find out more, there is a social media. Uh, Lou Festival of Light can be found on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, I think there will be an after video. Um, the people involved in Visual Spectrum are taking a lot of video footage, so they will probably make a celebratory video afterwards. I mean, there were street performers, there were stilt walkers, there were um, fire artists, there were... Uh, giant cuddly teddy bears walking down the street there were people doing balloon tricks there were musicians there were all sorts of stuff to make it just a, a, a total festive atmosphere um and uh, just to mention that uh, there is an aerial version of the st peter's uh one that i'm going to share with patrons probably tomorrow uh, there's an aerial video that's shot by drone uh the whole sequence uh which i believe you'll enjoy if you enjoyed uh that one um it's shot from the ground, you know. Elaine says, you outdid yourself today. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that in every episode of Live Irish Myth, but it seems appropriate that we should have something giant and dramatic, you know, and wonderful um, for the 200th anniversary, especially something where it brought people together. The organisers reckon in total there were about 80,000 people came to the various shows. I think they're underestimating that slightly. Uh, I think Saturday... Um, Saturday, there were easily 15 or 20,000 people around. I could be mistaken, but anyway, sound was perfectly synced. Pipes, that being goosebumps. Yes, indeed. Happy 200 to all, says Patricia back. Hello, Patricia. I forgot, uh, or it's not that I forgot, but I don't think I saw you there. So please forgive me for not mention, mentioning you before. Yeah, so I really don't know how I can top that, to be honest. Uh, I'm as a thoroughly delighted, chuffed, thrilled, honoured, privileged to be to have been involved. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Never thought I'd see the day uh, when uh, 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 giant three D animated projections of our mythology would be displayed on local landmarks. The hope is that the project can be even bigger next year to take in maybe one or two more landmarks. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Um, it's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. How do we beat this next year? Well, 
you know, as Tom King always says, challenge accepted. And we say that very bravely. And then we go, oh, crikey, how am I going to actually achieve that, you know? But uh, <coughs> I'm just making sure that I'm not forgetting anybody. Um, in Loud County Council, the people who we had sort of most contact with were Colette Moss, uh, Susan Murphy, and Aideen Morrissey. Uh, thank you to all of those. Uh, uh, to Trevor and uh, Kelly Louise in Love Draw Had a Bids. Uh, to all the team at Visual Spectrum. Uh, to Fall to Ireland uh, uh, and the sources of funding from Fall to Ireland, Louth County Council, etc. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of everybody who saw that show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what date is it planned for next year? It would be the same. It, it's a sort of a Halloween Samhain event. Um, uh, the reason being that uh, the evenings uh, fall quickly uh, at that time of year so that you can put on those displays before the clocks went back the first few shows were at 7 p.m and then after the clocks went back an hour they were at 6 30 p.m and it's not too late that you can bring the kids out you know um joan says brilliant auntie maybe next year two of members can meet up and make a weekend of it try to make a decent triscal at tom's maybe too that sounds like a great plan joan absolutely uh, i think it would be uh i i i think look i i even though it's over now, uh, I think it's unmissable, you know. Um, I did try my best to do live streams, to share photographs and to share videos uh, throughout the show uh, to give you, uh, especially the international viewers, uh, a little bit uh, 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 of a taste of it, you know. Um, said Anthony said it was supposed to run for eight with one off in between, but one night was raining too hard, so it ran for seven. Yeah, exactly. Um, but... Uh, running for about three hours a night. And again, because there were repeating shows, and it's the same show repeated at each uh, monument, uh, you had time to go to each and maybe see them all twice or even three times if you wanted, and to catch some of the the fire throwers or the uh, jugglers or whatever in between. Uh, it was just a really, really wonderful event. And uh, congratulations, hats off to all who were involved. Big, big team of people. Uh, special thanks to Gronje, uh, my co-narrator. Um, which I think uh, uh, you will agree with that she did a fabulous job. What do we say we finish the evening with? Uh, I was going to close out with Michael Slavin uh, again. I know I'm repeating, but I just thought that um, his words of wisdom were just so profound and so beautiful, to be honest, and so human. Uh, I thought that it would be an apt way uh, to close out the show this evening. Uh, don't forget, um, we have the Four Knox tours this Saturday, mostly booked out. And do you know what? I am actually going to check that while I'm talking to you, just to make sure I'm not talking through my backside. Uh, let me just check here on the website as to if there are any tickets left. Uh, the reason I'm having three separate tours instead of one is to make sure that we don't have a huge amount of traffic trying to park on the road outside Four Knox at the one time. Yeah, no, they're all sold out, uh, all sold out. Uh, but keep an eye, I will be advertising the next tour, the next public Mythical Ireland tour uh, very shortly. Uh, and I see we have a spammer. So if you wouldn't mind, report the spammer, folks. If you're on YouTube, uh, report them. Uh, I'm going to try and get rid of them quickly. Um, we will, honestly, if I can get to the thing. Um, yeah, so keep a close eye on... Facebook especially, and on the website, because what I'll be doing is, I just want to get rid of this uh, spammer. Just give me one moment. Hide user on this channel. Thank you. Um, uh, what I'll be doing is announcing the tours on the tours page of the website, first and foremost, and then from there onto the social media. Uh, each tour will be at a different place, and then we'll rotate. So last month's tour in October was at Douth. This month is at Four Knox. Next month will be somewhere else, you know. Joan says, you did yourself, Mythical Ireland, County Louth and Ireland proud tonight. Thanks, Joan. Uh, uh, very, very, very delighted and happy to have been involved in it. A tremendous community event. More in is it Moran Thine from Scotland, uh, which is uh, Trinonawa, I think. Uh, brilliant stuff. And thank you. Uh, I hope she doesn't mind me saying it. Uh, I hope so. I don't think she will, but I'm a very uh, grateful thanks to Anne Scott Doherty, who just increased her patronage 
uh, to the Bronze Age level so that she can see the Michael Slavin uh, film. Thank you, Anne, uh, uh, for upping your patronage during our show. Don't forget that that's the address for becoming a patron there, patreon.com forward slash mythical Ireland. Um, and we will close out with Michael Slavin, um, uh, a, a real highlight, uh, a, a few minutes of just profound wisdom and deep humanity. Great night, Anthony. Sleep well. Thanks, uh, Wayne, and to everyone indeed. I guess I need to take days off from school and fly over, says Monica. Do you know what? It would be worth it, you know? Uh, it would be worth it. Um, have a great week, Tua, says uh, Kathy May. Yes, indeed. And you have a great uh, week and a great day. Uh, and uh, Nick is wishing us all uh, a great evening as well. Anyway, here to close us out. So uh, I, I have to say my usual, uh, apart from the patronage stuff, I have to say thank you to each and every, every one of you for tuning in this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure and a privilege. Uh, remarkable broadcast. Here's to the next 200 and more, says Tom. Thank you, Anthony, and dear friends of the two. I thank you all so much. Blessings of the Forge of the Smooth Road. Boyne Valley sends much love to all dear friends. Take care out there until next time. Well said, Tom absolutely well said and joan saying night all loving this what can i say says elaine thank you for another great episode uh you're very very welcome um and adele who's already in tuesday uh good night to one and all ikawa kolosov slongafol and most importantly toga buggy and if you hold on for a moment we will play you out with uh, the wonderful words of michael slavin we will honestly when I get it ready, and no more dad jokes. Good night. If you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. what's your own personal spirituality? Your own what? What? What do you think is? What do you think waits, if anything, beyond this life? For I would find nothing, so that every moment of living is utterly precious. Every moment is an eternity. Every moment of love is a, a gem. Every person that you can perhaps help make a little happier is salvation. That the world, the universe, is a, an extraordinary mystery to which we can apply everything we applied to the unknown God. We can apply it to the universe because it is everything that we used to say about God, everlasting, all-powerful, all-giving, all of those things. I wouldn't preach to anybody because they have to find their own accommodation to the reality of their life. Sometimes they find it in a book. Sometimes they find it in a person that they meet. Sometimes they find it in a group, in a relationship, whatever. But I know that humans feel vulnerable. And they're always seeking for something that helps them beyond what they can do for themselves or some other human being can do for them. So they reach out to Allah or they reach out to God, they reach out to Jesus, they reach out to Buddha, they reach out to whatever it is that is beyond what this world offers them and I am not one to say to anybody whether there is or there isn't I only know what my mind will accept and that's it <laughs>